Classroom 2.0 allows teachers to set up classes manually without MDM. Classroom 2.0 was among the barrage of releases yesterday, headline of course by iOS 10.3. Classroom 2.0 is special because it allows teachers to set up classes manually without having to have mobile device management. Uh, so if you don't have a, a big IT department that's managing MDM, you can set up and invite students manually using Classroom 2.0. So in this video, I'm going to briefly walk through some of the features found in the app. And of course, we're gonna talk about some of the headlining features in the Welcome to Classroom splash screen. So you have remote control, you can launch apps, websites, iBooks on every iPad in class. There's a new big screen feature which allows you to project students' work on a classroom Apple TV. There's screen view which lets you glance at any screen in your classroom. And then there's peace and quiet, a new feature that lets you mute any device in your classroom with just a tap. So after launching Classroom 2.0, it's gonna ask for teacher information. So you just put in your name, put my name in like that. And once it's in there, you just tap done. Just like that. All right, so now I'm gonna create a new class and I'll call it nine to five Mac. You can also select a color and there's no real good nine to five Mac color, but I'll just choose this one, the closest thing to it, this blue color, I'll tap done. And if I wanna change something, I can use the little info button. I can change my name, the color, delete the class. If I tap on the class, I can go to the classroom. And if it's your first time launching, it's gonna ask you to enable notifications. So now here is the overall view for the classroom. There's no students yet enrolled, so there's not a lot of options available. So we'll just tap add to add a student to the class. It's gonna give us a little code. So that is the code that you would give to your student in order for them to enroll in your class. Now the really neat thing is that the classroom option shows up automatically in the settings app, so they don't need to install anything special. It will show up automatically as long as they're connected to the same network. So I just tap add nine to five Mac, and then I enter the code provided by the teacher to add the class. So 8773, and then tap add. And now on the teacher's device, you see it says waiting for teacher. I just tap add to add that student to class. Now in a more realistic situation, you would be adding multiple students at the same time, not just one, but for this example, one will do. All right, so let me show you some of the things that are possible with the classroom app. So I can actually launch apps on a student's device if they have that app installed, of course. You see it says fail to open because it's not installed on their iPad. So I'm gonna choose an app I know they have, 1Password, and you can see opening 1Password, and that opens up on the student's device. I can even see a little icon that shows 1Password is open on their device. I'll just tap done here. So you saw how I can launch apps. I can also launch a website or an iBook. So if I go to navigation, you see iBooks and Safari. So we'll open up Safari. And then it has my list of bookmarks on my local iPad. So I can open up one of my bookmarks on the student's iPad, just like that. Pretty cool, huh? Could definitely see that being useful, maybe linking to a syllabus or some other uh, research item that the student may need. All right, so let's try some other stuff here. There's a lock option. There's also a mute option, which is a new feature in 2.0, so I can mute anyone's iPad in my classroom. And you can also request to view the screen of one of your student's iPads. So I'm doing that right now. I'm going to always allow on the student iPad, and there you see a little screenshot of the current situation on that iPad, and I can tap view screen to view the full screen. And it's basically real time, although it is a little laggy, obviously, but you can see right here, as I scroll on the student iPad, those same changes show up on the teacher iPad. So really cool being able to see what's going on right there. If a student needs help or whatever the case may be, you can easily provide help just by utilizing that screen sharing feature. And screen sharing isn't quarantined to one particular app. In fact, if the user, uh, say they exit out to the home screen, you can actually view that as well. Watch the little icon on the teacher's iPad, you notice that the icon updated to reflect the changes on the student's iPad. So I can tap that, I can tap view screen again, and if they always allow access, then I can view that instantly, and I can see that they're on the home screen there. Another new feature that <laughs> I don't know if the student will actually appreciate this, but now you can airplay a student's screen onto a classroom installed Apple TV. So 
if the student needs to show their work or give a presentation, this is one way to do so. Or if you're just trying to help the student or uh, give an example to the rest of the class, then you can do that using the Apple TV. And like I mentioned earlier, you can also use the lock feature to lock down the iPad so that the user, the student in this case, cannot interact with it. Now remember that this would be an entire classroom of students that you would be dealing with. So you can see why such a feature would be handy to minimize and cut back on distractions. And there are additional features to be found in the classroom app, such as the ability to create groups within a classroom. So if you can split up specific students, maybe they're working on a special project, you can break those up into groups. And just like you can take actions on an entire classroom, you can also do so for groups. Now, one final thing I want to talk about is the ability to share documents and the ability to share web pages using AirDrop. So if you tap the share sheet from a student iPad or from the teacher iPad for that matter, you can actually share documents and web pages with the teacher or with the student easily. So I just sent over a web page. You can see it shows up under the sharing button there and I can just tap that and that will take me directly to that web page just like that. So that's a much easier implementation of sharing when compared to the previous version of Classroom. So ladies and gentlemen, I understand that most of you aren't teachers, but I'm still interested to hear what you have to say about Classroom 2.0. Let me know down below in the comments. This is Jeff with 9to5Mac.